So in this video, I'm going to take you through my process for creating a character concept piece in 2D. We're going to take it all the way from the sketch and the idea to a final rendered concept. A quick disclaimer, this video is a shortened version of a full five hour course available now. Links in the description and more info at the end of the video. Okay, so typically the first thing I would do when making a character like this is uh, define who the character is, right? So that's why I've gathered this reference board, a pure reference board, where I've also written out a little description for who the character is. And in this case, it's sort of this uh, uh, Middle Eastern-ish warrior who is wielding a cursed sword. Um, and he's now been abandoned by his family and uh, his country. And he's looking for a way to rid himself of this cursed sword. Um, so that's kind of the, the idea of the character. The character is also supposed to fit into this uh, universe that I have called Iron Tail, which is a fantasy IP that I'm developing. And then I'm also imagining that the character needs to fit into sort of a action RPG roguelike kind of setting, uh, like Hades or Diablo or something like that. And that's kind of the, that, that's the framework for what I'm designing this character for. And I think it can be really important to uh, to set those uh, boundaries kind of, and not just designing a character for the sake of a character almost, uh, I find it a lot more useful, uh, both in terms of like design, visual language, and all these things to to have those boundaries. Um, I think it, it guides me a lot more than, than becoming a, a compromise or hindrance. It's actually, it, it lets me think in a certain way and design something for a specific purpose. And I think I always make much better stuff when I'm thinking in those, uh, those lines. And along with that, I have a bunch of other reference that uh, is going to help me along, uh, both some real-world reference and some uh, inspirational reference of art, uh, especially something about like the uh, some iconic characters from like Dota and uh, also Kratos there. And I'm just looking at those characters for their kind of elegance and simplicity in design and the, the clear-cut nature in, in how they look. Um, but uh, but balance your references. I think that's that's a really good thing. So when getting into the actual sketching process, uh, the first thing I like to do is to still try to define who the character is. And just based on the description, it doesn't really tell us exactly what the character is. So I would usually start off by defining like a very loose sketch of who the character is in terms of like the whole thing, right? So I'm doing these quite dynamic poses that uh, illustrate kind of the body language of the character, but also the different uh, proportions of the character. So I'll do a couple of these. Uh, some of them will be you know, quite uh, big and strong. You can see this this recent one is like, or the one we're looking at now is like quite broad and more like a heavy character. And I could also work with the description, um, but th there's so many ways to go just based on uh, the description uh, that I really want to figure these things out. And I think, you know, lots of people might do this with, uh, with do using silhouettes instead. I definitely prefer doing these like sketchy lines because uh, it's much more easy for me to work with kind of movement and the way that the character carries themselves. And that really sells the character for me personally. I think that's, I see so much more of the character in in adding movement and adding posture. And it, it tells me so much more, not just, you know, the the body type, but also the movement. And I think it's easy for me to, to play with the movement with these kinds of uh, sketches. And here I'm kind of going through some of the different elements that I like from the different sketches, like I like the arm there and the helmet there from that guy. And then I'm kind of combining them and saying, okay, now I have an idea of who the character is. And the guy in sort of the middle holding. So when I have an idea of who the character really is also kind of visually, then I will go in and do a proper sketch. And this sketch is the one that's actually gonna become the kind of the foundation for the final concept piece. And here I'm defining kind of like some perspective lines, uh, just so I can, you know, compose the feet and the head in those areas and then the horizon line there around the middle and i'm trying to figure out the the posture and once again i'm using this kind of sketchy style uh to uh, to get me there and i'm flipping uh, back and forth a lot uh to check if what i'm doing works right so that's that can be a little bit confusing to look at but um but but it really works for me and i'm also you can see some lines i was drawing there that was kind of to test whether you have like an active side and a, a simple side uh it's something i usually like to um to, to figure out. So I'm like, uh, one side should be kind of simple and the other side should be complex. So his side where his hands and his sword is pointing towards, that's kind of the complex side. Um, after I got this sketch kind of nailed down more or less, then I typically like to do just like a splash of color. Uh, and that's because color can be a really good way of separating out things. You could also do it with value, but I think when you're in digital, there's, you know, 
you might as well just do color. Uh, and you can do some cool things with color where you can separate out things and it can actually help the sketch faster than trying to uh, make it visual uh, to visualize it with the sketchy brush stroke. Uh, then doing colors can be really helpful. I'm also doing some color variations here just to see what's working, testing out uh, different examples, trying different skin tones, and especially trying to figure out how this uh, the tattoo um, kind of contrasts with with the rest of the skin. Um, and uh, I was actually having a kind of hard time figuring out exactly what I would want, um, but I tried out bunch of different things I ended up going with something uh, in the middle which is kind of where I started but but it can it can be helpful to test out stuff once in a while my process is typically not to uh, try out a bunch of things I, I try out the things in my head rather than uh, doing it on the page um, but uh, but just for visualization and for you guys that's kind of the process I would go through in my my head um, and for me that works um, so when I'm happy with the with the colors and the sketch and all that stuff, then I can move into kind of doing a proper construction drawing. And this is something that, you know, you don't need for, for a concept. You don't need it to be really, you know, properly constructed and proper in 3D and, and in perspective, all these things. But it really helps when doing the later parts, like the cloth and the items and stuff, that they all feel connected to a proper form can really sell them as like proper items. And it also helped me design items that are functional. Uh, and I'm actually planning on making this into a 3D character later on. So that stuff is just already really helpful. You don't need it, but it just means I'm solving some things already. And, uh, and I also think it's fun and it, it definitely gives it a more grounded look or like a, uh, like a look that everything functions and I'm, I'm a sucker for that so, so so that's great and I'm also doing some like lots of constructional anatomy here uh, looking at some reference here and there and making sure that everything is grounded and you can see in the background I have a grid and that's just to keep myself aligned with everything I could probably also do this without the grid I tend to do it without the grid mostly um, but it's super helpful so if you're getting into something like this I can I can recommend trying those things out and here um, starting to build uh, cloth on top, looking at some reference, building some cloth um, on top of that construction. And it really helps the drapery and the folds to have that underlying uh, construction base. Uh, then I was building out the hat um, on this uh, this head here. And I was actually kind of struggling with, with building out the helmet. It was, uh, it was not really working for me, I think. Uh, I realized that I had to move the head up a little bit because I had a certain look in the sketch where, where the head was a bit more kind of longer and elongated and and I really liked that look because it gave it like a more sinister look and the character's not sinister but the character's also a little bit dark in like how they they function with this cursed sword and stuff um, and talking about the cursed sword then now I'm I'm doing a little sketch of the cursed sword as I started trying to figure out like, okay what's that actually supposed to be like what would make it feel cursed and what kind of sword should it be I ended up going with this kind of like straightened saber like thing and then just with a very simple skull at the end I could probably have done a nicer sword but it ended up becoming quite simple um with the with the hilt and stuff and kind of the the knob at the end of the the handle and um and I think that that ended up kind of working for me uh, right, I was actually not doing a saber. Uh, I, I tried doing the saber, but then in the sketch I had this straight sword, like you see here, um, and that uh, I just liked that better, and and I think it ended up working well for the character. And then I used it, kind of drew in the perspective, and that made it work. And you can also see me redrawing the arm here. The, the pose of the arm was feeling a little bit awkward, and I had that scabbard anyways on the back of him, and then I used the hand to kind of rest on that scabbard. So after I'd done all those things, kind of like, getting the sketch settled in and uh, figured all that stuff out on top of the construction layer. Then I go in and kind of recolor everything again, which can seem like I'm doing the same thing uh, a couple of times, but it gives me an opportunity to reevaluate those steps. Like, okay, how exactly should the silhouette be here? How exactly should the, the shape be there? How exactly should the color transition right there? And I quite like taking those same steps a couple of times. I just think I end up with a lot better design results if I get an opportunity to reevaluate uh, those steps at a more detailed stage and then a more detailed stage and then further and further, rather than doing a bunch of iterations uh, really early and then picking one and then just going full on with that one. Um, I think this is a lot more approachable for me and uh, and a lot faster for me also personally. 
And so I'm essentially just filling in uh, the color, blocking that kind of stuff out. I'm still uh, moving towards maybe wanting to do a line drawing on top of everything. So I'm I'm just preparing the base. Uh, and I could use the line drawing for doing the color. That would be even more clean. But that also means I would have to be more clean with the line drawing. Uh, and that's a different kind of work. And I'd rather have the line drawing be a little bit quick and just something to tie the style uh, together. So here I'm going in and just doing some... Uh, you know, line drawing for the face. I typically start at the face. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you start, but the face is just a fun place to start. So I'm, I'm drawing that in. And you know that the, um, the actual character's design have a hood and a helmet that's kind of covering everything. So the face is just something that it could be nice to have that underneath. Uh, and maybe I do a separate uh, portrait, uh, like next to the to the drawing itself to, um, to kind of show who the character is behind the mask. But with the line drawing, nothing really special is going on here. It's just like a thinner line, uh, kind of reconstructing everything. And I'm looking at some reference here and there to to make that happen. And again, I'm not relying on the line for selecting stuff or like masking things. I'm just doing it to tie together the style. Um, so it, I, I can still be a little bit loose with it. Um, I was really struggling with the hand there on the scabbard. I, I actually never got it quite solved, but I was like, you know what? It's a, it's just a concept. It's not a final character illustration. It's, it's more of a concept. So I was, uh, kind of forgiving myself for not doing that well enough here. Um, and I'm drawing out the sword and these things. And I think the line part is something that can be quite just relaxing. Uh, it's a very kind of meditative state. You see me here kind of cutting out the head, so I have that still behind the scenes, and then I'm drawing the helmet on top of uh, afterwards. It's just so I have that flexibility where I can um, uh, have both, right? I want to see the head underneath and see the, the stuff. And I actually managed exactly to get the eye to peek out underneath the helmet there, and that was uh, very rewarding because the eye and the, he the helmet, the face and the helmet kind of just matched up and... Uh, and having the eye poke out there a little bit. And I also changed the scabbard because uh, I hadn't really changed that since the sword design changed a little bit. So I, so I changed that. And here I'm just cleaning up a few lines, a few like color uh, kind of shapes uh, here and there, just masking it all out, making it a little bit more pretty. Not super essential for the concept, but it, it, it ended up uh, working quite nicely. And uh, here I'm, I am with like kind of the, the base color kind of done and then uh, I think I'm moving out to actually do like a, a little bit of a fuller portrait, um, just having that on the side and uh, not here, but in the full thing, I'm um, I'm uh, gonna render out the entire uh, face with like more uh, painted, painterly stuff. And here making some proportional changes, looking at some reference, just getting a bit closer to the kind of face that I want. I, I never ended up being completely happy with the face, but I think it, it got a little bit better when I was doing the the final render um, and here I added some hair and stuff and I tried some different beard shapes and I actually ended up really liking this beard shape I, I didn't think that the character was gonna have a beard to begin with but but these kind of like side stuff that really worked so I got that kind of base color down and then I'm just introducing some shadow with a multiply layer and here can I use the whole kind of uh, character in a group as a mask for everything and adding the shadow um, is super fun and super rewarding and i'm also trying some different variations one where the sun was coming from the front one where it was coming from the side just to see what was working and i ended up really liking the front uh, or the side one because it kind of put the entire front in darkness and that played well with the, kind of the character and even though it's only a concept piece i think it still sells the character and i think that's often the idea with the concept piece also is like if you want to sell the character then and you're going to do a little bit of lighting why not choose lighting that you know affects how we perceive the character and once i've done the shadow then i, I go in afterwards and just do a little bit of local color variation uh, here and there and uh, and i know it's going to work because i have that shadow already built in so hopefully just like doing some local color and then having that shadow on top it will just make it kind of seamless and work uh, here I'm working a little bit on the tattoo and I just I wasn't happy it kept looking like a shirt whenever I was doing something a little bit more weird and I wanted to be like a tattoo but I also wanted to be distinct because I wanted to keep that simplicity and stuff um, and I ended up doing something quite simple with just the way it is now which is just the arm and then a band two bands across the, the arm and you know it was simple and I, I ended up kind of really liking it and I think it worked really well with the rest of the ensemble and here I'm just continuing doing 
you know, colorations, doing a little bit of rust on the on the helmet and playing with the, the lighting. We also got some bounce light coming in. You can see that kind of lighting up under the, the packs and the, the apps and stuff. And then to, to wrap everything up a little bit, I'm doing some uh, rim lighting and that's just to make everything a bit more showy and uh, and flashy. Uh, you can see you got the rendered face there. You just saw it for a little bit on the side. Um, and uh, you can see that in the in the full course, of course. Uh, and here I'm talking a little bit about like the different kinds of materials. That's also a really important thing to think about is how does each material feel? And especially if you're doing something quite fast, like for a concept piece, really getting that material difference uh, can make a huge difference. And it's something you can do relatively fast and it makes a really big difference for the perceived nature of each material. I also did a bunch of ambient inclusion here just to make everything pop out, right? The, the shadow is really what does it to make everything pop, uh, to make everything kind of form-like, but then the, the ambient inclusion makes everything just separated and pop a little bit. So, so that's a really nice thing also to add. And that, you know, it depends on the style you're going for, but for me, it was definitely uh, working. And I was trying a bunch of different stuff with the lighting here. Uh, I was trying to turn off the shadows and shit without that look really good. And that's the cool thing with doing everything in layers, which I've been doing for the entire time. Like the materials is one layer, the shadows one layer, the lighting is one layer. And then you can turn the stuff off. And if all of the, if you turn on one layer, uh, turn off one layer and the other stuff still works, then you're pretty good to go. And then if you just have one of the layers on and it still works, then it's probably gonna work pretty nicely together. And that's, that's usually how it works for me. Um, and here I'm getting really close to the to the final thing. Um, I'm just putting in the final little rendering details here and there, just fixing up like little light shapes, making everything nice and pretty, uh, and trying on the face just to see if, if that could be something. And then to wrap everything up, I'm just composing a little sheet here where I'm also putting up the sword, just putting in some color there so you kind of know what, what that sword is like. And the very final thing is just adding some cursed effect to the to the sword and uh and that's pretty much how the whole thing ended up and uh here we have the final thing and i think it ended up pretty nice uh, i'm pretty excited about it i'm kind of like i'm starting to feel this character um a lot more and once again, if you're interested in the full five hour course, then it's available now over on my website under the store section where you can get it for a little bit cheaper than you would on Gumroad, where it's also uh, available. And the full course uh, kind of features 11 uh, chapters from the very beginning to the end. It has the reference board, it has the Photoshop files uh, and some bonus stuff and uh, take you through the whole thing uh, fully voiced and uh, commentated. So check that out if uh, that's something that interest you. Um, otherwise, I hope that uh, this video was insightful, helpful and useful. And uh, as always, I thank you so much for watching and uh, see you in the next one.